Ladies and gentlemen, and it's a pleasure for me to be here and to present you the story of the Polish church that was built 100 years ago. I'm from Poland. My name is Margaret Stepczak. Uh, information I will present tonight uh, I got from um, parish members, like uh, sitting here, uh, Talis Pudis, Patricia Babic, Aris Radzikowski, uh, Filis Niedźwiecki, and uh, from books that were published for Golden Jubilee and Diamond Jubilee. The last book was uh, published 1990. Um, I will read the history. I hope my accent will not hurt. <coughs> the Church of St. Mary's in Ainon, Pennsylvania, dates back to the year 1901, at which time a group of Lithuanians and Polish people started the church together. This church was located on the original site of the present St. Mary's of Vilna Church on 3rd Street in Ainon. They worshipped here together until 1914, when the church was destroyed by a fire. An influx of Polish immigrants into the Ainon area at this time led to the establishment of the new church. From their homelands in Europe, the Polish brought a strong desire to practice their faith in compliance with their ethnic customs and church traditions, along with the efforts, knowledge and skills of some of the more business-oriented members in the community. The most reverend Michael of Hoban, Bishop of Scranton, granted permission to the Polish people for the establishment of this parish church. Our Lady of Częstochowa, Roman Catholic Church, located in, on Main Street, Iron, Pennsylvania. The reverend John Suchos was appointed the first pastor and the formal Groundbreaking ceremonies were then held on July 19, 1914. The architect for the building of the church was Theodore Pride of Scranton. For the entire year, the men of the parish put for the many days of intense backbreaking manual labor to keep the cost at the minimum. It is said that even the children took part in the labors of building the new church. They picked stones in the area of the church where constructions took place and cleared the church grounds free from stones and rocks. In the interim, while construction of the church was taking place, mass and other religious services were held in a small temporary chapel located in the Stobak building on Old Chapel Road, today Betty Street. On July 27, 1915, the Most Reverend Michael Hoban, Bishop of the Diocese of Scranton, participated in the cornerstone blessing ceremonies. The ceremonies were so well attended that the new church was overcrowded. A large crowd was gathered on the grounds outside the church. The bishop blessed the multitude with, multitudes with the blessed sacrament on the inside of the church. On this occasion, two sermons were preached. The Reverend Monsignor Stanislav Spotański on the inside and the Reverend Bolesław Baranowski on the outside of the new church. A painting of Our Lady of Częstochowa adorned the improvised altar in this temporary chapel. A larger replica of this picture was obtained by Reverend Suhos for the new church. The picture was embroidered with jewelry that was donated by the parishioners in the memory of their loved ones and their future generations. Two nieces of Reverend Suhos, Helen and Mary, Mary completed all the handwork on the picture. This same painting remains today above the main altar in the church. However, it was restored in commemoration of the Diamond Jubilee 1990. It's probably the, on the right. Mm. This was accomplished through the efforts of the Sacred Heart Altar and Rosary Society. Mrs. Patricia Babich was chairman of this project. 
The main altar of the church was built as a model of Jasna Góra, the Bright Hill Chapel in Częstochowa, Poland. Those reverend <coughs> Suhos with the lay founders called the new church Our Lady of Częstochowa on the Bright Hill in Einon, Pennsylvania. The generosity of the parish members at the time the new church was completed were numerous. The present windows, which bear many of the donors and all their family names, still remain. And now I will read just the names of all pastors. Um, there were 15 counting with, uh, when we enter with Father Sad today. So first pastor, John Suhos, pictures pictured here. Uh, he was from 1914, so since the um, construction began, to 25, 1925. Then was um, Pastor John Domasiewicz, then Reverend Edward Zawadzki. So all Polish names, they, they can, we can just assume that they were they held services in Polish language and English. Uh, uh, next forward it was um, Reverend Francis Warunek, um, then Antoni Kozłowski, then Reverend John Kozłowski. Mm -hmm. uh, seventh of them was Reverend Albert Augustin. In Polish we say Augustin. Uh, eighth pastor was John Madai. Um, uh, the ninth, Reverend Andrew Marcinko. Um, the tenth, Reverend Bernard Szepulski. Um, 11th, Reverend Sokołowski. Uh, the 12th uh, doesn't sound Polish. I know that Father Pratico uh, was American, <laughs> as a Polish person, I can say. And then 13th, David Kramer. Uh, 14th, uh, today's Bishop Joseph Bambera, who I know has Polish background. I, uh, was, we are talking, he's his family comes from the same town or the same area in Poland I come from, from Poznan. And then 15th, uh, 15th pastor is uh, Father Sad. Uh, and on his time, on July, oh, this is important, on July 9th, 2010, Our Lady of, Chance, uh, of Vilna <coughs> Church was closed. The day later, July 10th, 2010, St. Mary of Częstochowa Church was officially closed. And the same month, St. Thomas Aquinas at Old, uh, and St. Mary of Częstochowa parishes merged into Christ, the King Parish, and Father Sad uh, just took over. He is now the, the pastor of the new parish. That was what I wanted to present you in short um, form. And then I think now this is Patricia Babic will continue. She will just now, now, in your history, you also have <coughs> things that were done during each of the past Yes, I, I have, but I, maybe, I don't know if I should just read this because it may be, maybe some of them. Maybe if there's one or two highlights uh, maybe, that okay. you want to mm -hmm, point out. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm, for example, Father Suhos, who was the first pastor, uh, he is, mm, taught children catechism, in instructed them in all aspects of church doctrine, um, and we know that he bought um, uh, jewelry from parishioners uh, and they embroidered the, um, the picture. But Reverend John Tomaszewicz, he, oh, he organized a Sacred Heart Society in the parish. Um, of oh, Father uh, Warunek, he was in the years 1933 to 41, seven years. He made Several, uh, several renovations in the rector and established a play area for the children in the rear of the church. Then, uh, Reverend Antoni Kozłowski, um, oh, he served uh, the parish in the most difficult time, the wars, the war years. Uh, World War II broke out at this time. He conducted many prayer services for the return of our parish, son, parish sons for peace throughout the world and offered spiritual mm -hmm. consolation to the families of the war victims. The first among the parish dead were Antony Wozniak, this is my maiden name by the way, Alfred Pawlowski, uh, Peter Kochański and Thomas Stobak. <coughs> it's important to mention those people. 
Mm. And the same pastor, after the war, he made many improvements <coughs> in the church and the reorganization of the church societies and activities. 1949, the church was retired, uh, retired with electric fixtures, the interior painted, new needles and organ were installed. The rectory was painted and a new furnace was installed. Lots of uh, lots for additional burial grounds were purchased at the cemetery. Many societies were reactivated, and church picnics, dances, and other social function functions were held as fundraising projects to help with the finances of the parish. I think this was important. <coughs> mm, just I, mm, oh, the Father uh, John Kozłowski. During his tenure, many new church accessories were purchased for the Golden Jubilee 65. A new roof was installed on the church. The exterior was covered with brick veneer, veneer and the interior of the church was painted. He served our parish until his untimely death on Christmas Day, 1971. This was shortly after serving Midnight Mass. Mm. Uh, Reverend Albert August Augustin, he installed new heating, electrical system. Oh, he served for 12 years and uh, a complete, complete new kitchen, new racks, new office equipment, and painting of the interior of the rectory took place. <coughs> The whole interior of the church was painted and gold leaf was used on the altar, pillars, walls, and ceiling were appropriate. All of the statues were repainted. New electrical, heating system, sound system, and automatic church bells and new pews were installed. The 65th Jubilee of the church was held during his tenure and many of the project was the installation of the air conditioning system in the church and the construction of a two-car garage. This was accomplished through the generous contributions, contributions of the parishioners, the relatives and friends. Um, oh, Reverend John Madden, he was from uh, eight, uh, 1984 to uh, 85 to one year, but although his tenure was short in time, his major accomplishments were of a spiritual nature. He was the first pastor to implement the practice of lay people as lectors in the liturgy. He was also instrumental in introducing the Legion of Mary to our parish, parish member. So one year, but this was his accomplishment. Um, our oh, Reverend Michael uh, Pulica, he was, um, for example, he was, for example, instrumental in organizing the youth group activities, CCD, altar boy programs, and reactivating the Boy Scouts of America, Island Group. This was the first time in our church history that the Boy Scouts were sponsored by our church. He also introduced the Divine Mercy devotions to our parish family, and he recognized the value that the congregation placed on their ethnic traditions and customs. And although being of a different ethnic background, he took the challenge of learning and practicing them. Um, Reverend Andrew Marcinko, Marcinko he was um, oh, the church. For um, example, he, the roof of a sanctuary was replaced. <coughs> All 17 windows in the church were restored and a new Allen organ was installed. The processional cross and altar, altar candlesticks were regilded. Uh, he beautified the front of the church and rectory by planting shrubbery and repairing the fence foundation. He had the rectory roof replaced remodeled the front porch, water sealed the basement walls, and replaced the storm, storm doors. The rectory interior was also redecorated, including new wall covering and repainting. Mm -hmm. so, 
Oh, for example, <coughs> video equipment for the CCD program and the youth group was purchased for use in the parish center. In 1987, the most reverend James uh, Timlin merged St. Mary's Vilna Church with Our Lady of Częstochowa Church. This was 1987. And the reverend Marcinko was appointed pastor of the two churches. The rectory of the Vilna Church was converted into classrooms for the CCD program. The interior of the rectory was painted and wallpapered. The porch was also restored. He, he initiated the implementing of the former CCD program, which included the CCD Educational Teaching Staff Program. Mm, Father Joseph Sika, he was for one year. He took care of the spiritual needs of the parish as well as the daily business matters during this period of time. <coughs> uh, we don't have much about Vincent Grimala, the next. He was um, then uh, Reverend um, Bernard Szepulski. He was, I see, like for three years. Um, he, um, he remodeled, for example, the choir loft area, renovated Our Lady of Lourdes Grotto, and reconstructed the left entrance and confessional. In addition, the church was dry cleaned and the walls, as well as many of the statues, were painted. He extended the sanctuary, rearranged the pews to accommodate the handicapped, and carpeted the entire church. These projects were completed in time for the church's 75th Diamond Jubilee celebration. Reverend Szepulski implemented the practice of lay people as Eucharistic ministers. He also started an adult education program, the Renew Retreats, the Living Stations of the Cross, and Living Nativity. In the rectory, he had new closets, refrigerator, hot water heater, and some electrical outlets installed. He also remodeled the secretary's office with a computer, carpeting, and shelving created pra prayer garden between the rectory and the church. And Reverend Szepulski started first picnic at St. Mary's, which still continues today. This is uh, important. Uh, Reverend Sokolowski, uh, July 1992, to, 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 for one year to 93. Reverend Sokolowski took a sick leave and Monsignor Practico again became administrator. The rectory renovations <coughs> began, began at his time. And then Father Pratico, Pratico, he was from 1993 to 2005. Rectory renovations continued and completed. New sidewalks and curbs at church and rectory. Fence removed, new handicapped entrance to church, draining on land, new doors for church and new roof was, were installed. <coughs> church was painted, pews refurbished, new carpeting, new altar and sacrifice, of sacrifice and new pulpit and baptist fountain were installed. Bell tower heat with lightning and fixed. Old building in back of church uh, was torn down and replaced with the now St. Mary of Vilna Parish Center. Monsignor Practico's 25th anniversary <coughs> was celebrated at this time, as, as a priest was well, celebrated at his time. And then we have they, uh, Pastor David Kramer, Kramer, who uh, I think he was for about two years, and the Reverend Edward Lyman remains as assistant pastor of St. Thomas, uh, and in July 2006 appointed administrator of St. Mary's and St. Thomas Aquinas Church. And then we had uh, Monsignor Bambera, from July 2007 to April 2010. He was appointed pastor of both churches, started um, the bereavement ministry, developed food pantry, planned the repair work to be done at St. Thomas Church after the collapse of the ceiling in July 2009. Monsignor Bamber, appointed delegate to the Diocese of, Diocese of Scranton, remains as a pastor in April 20, uh, 2010, he was appointed as Bishop of Scranton. And then, as I said, uh, Father Christopher Saab um, took over and uh, to parishes 
Santoma se Saint Mary of Częstochowa and Saint Thomas Aquinas Church merged to became into Christ the Christ the King Parish which we have today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> After Pat, we'll have questions, okay? Good evening. Our Lady of Częstochowa, the Black Madonna, has a varied and an interesting history. It is believed that St. Luke, the evangelist, created the first painting showing the Virgin Mary holding the Christ child on her lap. According to religious tradition, it was painted on boards taken from the table of the Last Supper by St. Luke. The icon's earliest history is unknown. Scientific studies suggest, however, that the icon was actually painted in the 5th or 6th century AD. The painting journey started in Jerusalem and ended in Ruthenia, and for 500 years adorned a castle in the town of Belz in the Ukraine. In 1382, Prince Ladislas carried the icon from his castle to Poland and entrusted its preservation to the monks of St. Paul, the first hermit monastery. Around 1430, an attack by the Tartans devastated the Polish shrine where the Madonna was resting. The icon was badly damaged and resulted in scratches on the right cheek and fires which gave the painting its dark shading. Records show that the present church was built between 1632 and 1648. A walled city grew up around the shrine in the 17th century, and the icon remains today atop Yasna Gora, the Hill of Light, at the most renowned shrine of Central Europe. In the year 1655, the monastery shrine, the resting place of the Black Madonna, was attacked by Swedish armies, but the walls held and helped inspire the nation of Poland. The following year, 1656, the reigning monarch, King John Kazimir, proclaimed the Mother of God to be the Queen of the Polish Crown and that the shrine of Jasna Gora would be the Mount of Victory, resulting in a deeply spiritual location for the entire Polish nation. Our painting of Our Lady of Częstochowa came to this country during the time the church was being built. During 18 1989 and 19, 1990, the Black Madonna was completely restored. The painting itself, canvas on wood boards, was cleaned and repainted by Sergei Badushek of Queens, New York. The riz, or the cloth covering the Madonna and the Christ Child, was completely restored by the Eastern Church Supply and embroidered with, with the jewelry from the original riz and also new jewelry donated by the parishioners. The frame was restored by B.K. Bennington and Son. They are church specialists of Scranton, Pennsylvania. Renewed attention was given to the icon when Pope John Paul II visited his native land and became the first pope to venerate the icon. The pope had a deep devotion to the Virgin Mary, but his visit was also fulfilling the traditional Polish homage for Our Lady of Częstochowa as Queen of Poland. Does anyone have any questions for any of our speakers? <coughs> um, I, I have a couple questions. <laughs> um, has the cornerstone been opened? No, I've never heard of it. Okay, so the cornerstone, the cornerstone, cornerstone was sealed in 1914, yeah. right? So there hasn't been a ceremony to see what was in it. So that might be something I'll talk to Father Son. <laughs> Now we're also hoping to have the history published. Okay, um, we're not sure whether the it'll be, the church will be doing the publication, or if not, then the historical society will be doing it and get the booklet together with pictures and make sure that we get it published for everyone. Okay, um, and what we I think when I was thinking over there, we usually have a couple times a year. A, a day that we call a scanning day. And on that day, um, either here in the borough building or we're over in the Iron Hose Company, and people could bring in photographs or newspaper articles, pictures or whatever, 
we would scan them into the computer and give them right back to them. And they would fill out a form telling us what it was and that was scanned in with the picture. So what I'm thinking is June is coming up and maybe what we'll do is I'll talk with Father about having the scanning day in the parish center at St. Mary's. And what we'll do then is we'll be there for a couple of hours for people who may have photographs, articles, um, or even information about Main Street because we're going to be working on that next year. But um, maybe we'll have that set up so that people can come in, bring in documents regarding Our Lady of Chestahoa. That way when we put the CD together for people to take, we'll have all those available. It's also helpful that if you uh, know who the people are, is to, with pencil, write their names on the back of the photograph. Because what we do is when we scan, we scan both sides so that people will know who they are. It's much, in fact, Tom has been doing some work with um, Archibald High School uh, class pictures. It, when was it, 1958, they started putting the names underneath? <coughs> <coughs> oh, yes, oh. and then they stopped. You know, and then they stopped. So we have a number of uh, photographs we're trying to figure out who's who and identifying them. And of course, the further you go back, there's not many people around who remember who they were. Um, some of the interesting things that you might want to look at that Pat pointed out to me and that I noticed is that When you come up and you look at this picture, it's the first Holy Communion picture. And Sally swears that she's not in it, even though I tried to pick her out. I'm there, I'm there. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> this was probably one of the first communion classes just after the church was opened. Because as Pat pointed out to me, you know where they have the picture of Jesus with the crown of thorns and the sorrowful mother? They mustn't have been completed yet. And if you look where they are, you'll see that there's two mirrors in the altar. And if you look in the mirrors, you can see the rest of the church. Okay. Also, and this I noticed later on, the sanctuary lamp was taken and pulled over and it's hooked on the side so that they could get a complete picture of the church and the altar. Because through Margaret's help, she translated this, by the way, we've seen a number of them, and you know what they are. They were given out as certificates for you receiving your sacraments. So down on the bottom, it talks about who received the sacraments and the date, and it's signed by the original pastor. So Margaret translated the certificate for me, and she pointed out what all the different things mean on the certificate. For example, it's the altar, and it looks like that picture was taken with the mirror still there because you can't see an image. But it talks about that the altar is a replica of the altar um, in Medjugorje, in Chestahoa. Okay? The bishop at the time, this is a relic of the true cross. This is the pastor who built the church. Okay, underneath here, it says, Queen of the Polish Crown, give freedom to our homeland. And then all of this is enlarged and translated. And Helen, who received her first communion in June 28th of 1925, it's her certificate. So when you get finished, come up and take a look. Some other things, we're also able to locate a picture of the first Our Lady of Vilna Church, um, which burned, the second one, and some pictures. Some interesting things regarding both Vilna and Chestahoa. We know that St. Francis, or Pope Francis, we won't make him a saint yet, but Pope Francis has declared this as a jubilee year of mercy. And a lot of that has to be due with the writings of St. Faustina Kowalska, whom Jesus appeared to and said, 
he wanted an image done of his divine mercy and also to start the divine mercy practice. Well, what happened is, because she didn't have that much schooling, when she was doing her um, journals that were ordered by her spiritual director, the person who translated them didn't do a very good job translating them. And what happened is, they thought that some of the writings that she was saying was suspect. Then when Carol Wojtyla was made bishop, he ordered a new translation. And when they were properly translated, he said, well, this is something important. This is something that Jesus is telling us to do. And he had Sister Faustina canonized. And he also made the Sunday after Easter, second Sunday after Easter, as the Feast of Divine Mercy. But what's interesting is, is Sister Faustina started out in the town of Vilda and ended up at Chestahoa. So it's intimately connected with the Jubilee year that's going on this year um, in the Catholic Church. Um, in fact, what Jimmy Skoblik used to do is, for the Divine Mercy Sunday, they would start the Divine Mercy at one church and then have it finish up at the other mm -hmm. to cover the history. So, does anyone have any questions regarding our speakers tonight? We'd love to thank them for all the work that they did, yeah. okay, yeah. all of the research. Thank you. And um, hopefully we'll get it, we'll be getting some more displays together for the anniversary and then see what's going to happen in the summertime. At least we get the cornerstone open mm -hmm. yeah. and we find Sally's birth certificate in it. I said this one right here. Right here. Looks a little bit like it right there. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for coming this evening. And just a reminder that the Historical Society has its meeting on the second Monday of every month um, from seven o'clock on here. Now just a reminder that next month we're going to be going up to Carbondale to see. We'll meet here at 6.30 for anybody who needs a ride. And John Mello, we're working on to be our next speaker. He's a geologist and we're hoping that he's going to be talking to us about the rocks around the area. We're gonna look for August, I think that might be good. All right. Tom, do you want to talk about some of the stuff that you have? Well, I don't know if it would be interesting. I was thinking of another achievement of uh, Father Marcinko. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for those stop signs on Main Street. Oh, is it? You didn't know that? No? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Edward mentioned something about uh, the donations we have. We have hundreds from the Archibald High School. There, our chief photographer in modern times was Joe Catanzari. Joe Cataz. We have the original pictures. Many of are in the yearbook. Uh, if you have time, or we have a room now in the convent, by the way. We can't call it a library because it's not handicap accessible but we have all kind of material. Uh, from the Archibald High School, commencement. Football, baseball, golf. Photographs. Archibald High School, these were donated. The faculty, you may remember some of them. Uh, e. H. Berg, Mrs. Ms. Colley, and the man with one arm, Professor Moore, not Moran, then like that. Uh, we have band and cheerleaders, uh, school activities, class photos, hundreds and hundreds of photos. Uh, Ed mentioned uh, the scanning. 
people in the, about five years ago came here. Mm -hmm. They brought in their photographs and documents. They were put on a disc. So now I made an index. Some are there for mine, and I think your book is there, and some in Polish are on that uh, scan. I call it the scanathon. Um, pictures. I had one made from hard copy from the disc. Head start, 1960, 50 years ago. And already uh, three of our parents have seen it. There's one now in North Carolina, the Morisco girl. The name, uh, names are right on the top. This was downloaded from that scan that uh, was mentioned. We do research. That's our job, the historical society. We had a question a few days ago about the Archbold Police Department. So we have some here. 1937, uh, William, J., William J. Kelly was our police chief. We have his obituary. Um, <coughs> first police chief was uh, M.J. Walsh. Uh, <laughs> but things about the town, a picture of the, the dock down at the uh, gravity slope uh, entrance to the trail. That's called a trailhead, right? Yeah. Yes. Now the Marywood <coughs> University students are building a new platform and they're making good progress on it. And if you walk the trail in the last few days, you know what an old hitching post was? Mm -hmm. yep. They're all along the trail, every quarter mile. Uh, about so high, and they have information on them. Right up here, there's one. Four City, 12 miles. Blakely, three miles. Winton Junction, one and a half miles. Um, so, so much. Uh, your society has files. This is just on the island church. And I think uh, Edward's going to... Uh, put them on this. You can look at them tonight if you wish. Uh, and other things. I was in the post office making copies. This won't uh, affect you if you live in Einan. There's a dam up on the hill. Laurel Run. This is White Oak. That's where our town began. But it says that the dam is a hazard. If you live below it, you better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that's worth, I made mean, that copy. I have a question. Yes. In the readings, you mentioned that uh, Which dam is the where the present St. Mary's is located and Betty Street, it was formerly called Chapel Road. When was it changed and why? Street. This is what I got from the books, but this is not. No, I, I realize that you have no information as to why or, why or who changed it. Who was Betty? Why is it named Betty? Only because I lived there for 50 years, it was also spelled B-E-A-T-T-Y. And then they added, yeah, it was B-A-T-T-Y, yeah. Then they dropped the A and just let it be Betty Street. Family name, perhaps. I don't care. But you know what I mean? Let's go ahead and give me some kind of stuff.